Welcome back, everyone, to SAFC Live. Another good night on the road for Sunderland, winning 4-0 down at the Mornflake Stadium. And Danny, a good variety of goals as well. It was, yeah, and I think following up after the weekend, a long trip down to Gillingham, uh, got the job done down there, a gritty performance, and you come back tonight, the lads are back probably for a day, and then they're back on the road again. So you're thinking, is it going you know, to catch up with their legs? But now, to be fair to the boys, uh, I said that I don't think we were quite at our best. At times, we were a little bit loose on the ball, but over the 90 minutes, obviously thoroughly deserved the win. Scored some good goals. The second one was the standout one for me. Uh, a nice tip for the team play, really, wasn't it? Link-up play on this right-hand side. And Ross has helped himself to a couple of goals, back in the goals. Diaku comes on, um, sprinting forward there. Looked like he got it stuck under his feet a little bit, but he shifted it out and he got a great strike away on his left foot. So uh, it's a great evening, injury-free, a clean sheet. Looking forward to the weekend now, Charlton at home. Let's roll the action then and relive some of the key moments from the game then. Yeah, it was a good start, I felt. First 10 minutes, I thought, right, we're at it tonight. You know, a couple of corners, good delivery coming in. Tom Flanagan, unlucky there. Almost got his second goal of the week. And then that one there, maybe I thought, could he have hit it first time? Pritchard, as he's rolled it to him, no O'Brien, it's, it's there just to try and bend it in that far corner. By the time he takes a touch... Uh, Defenders are getting on top of him and it's comfortable for, for Jaskalainen in goal. And then Crew didn't really work Hoffman throughout the evening. He didn't have that one good save to make, really. I know he tipped one past the post second half, but they had this little spell, didn't they, Crew, where, as I said, we invited them back into the game, I felt, um, through through us being a bit bit loose on the ball. But, um, you know, overall, I think this is the right back, isn't it? Yeah, just McGeady doesn't, doesn't match his run. Um, angles against him, I think, is it Ramsey getting forward? But... Um, after that, it was all about ourselves, I think, you know, down that left-hand side. I think this is what it started out. We fired a couple of a low balls in, didn't we, across that near post area where I think this one as well from the right-hand side, Ross Stewart's on the move, doesn't quite get much purchase on the ball, but you can see crew scrambling and you can just sense us getting on top of, at this stage. I think this one uh, comes out to Aidan O'Brien. Yeah, he's unlucky. I think just, just as it skips in front of him there, it just pops up off Aidan O'Brien and the chance. Chance goes away. He had a couple of them, Aidan O'Brien. He has the one we'll see in a minute. And this is this is the opening goal, isn't it? So Pritchard fires that ball in. And it's that when it's a, a night game sometimes, you don't need to water the pitch. It's that dew that gets on the surface. And once it skips off in front of you, you, you know, you don't time it right. And that's what happened there for Thomas. It comes up off his shin and it, it fires it past his own goalkeeper. And then there, Ross Stewart, another good corner comes in there. Ross Stewart across his man. And he's unlucky not to, to find the top corner as well with that. But this, this goal for me, it's great play, you know, little give and goes and they're on the move where you're saying Dan Neal getting in behind and just thinks a lovely little ball up for, for Ross Stewart there and Ross has got time to, I say, I think I said in comedy, time to sign the ball there, best wishes, Ross Stewart and uh, finds that bottom corner. Let me see it again now, see middle centre half of their back three has to come across, look after that near post space and it's good awareness from Dan, good composure, doesn't panic, just stands it up and, uh, and Ross is... Ross is planting the, in the bottom corner. What about this for a challenge? Yeah, it's great from, uh, from Cole Winchester. And I think he's, he's defended well, you know, Winchester, we've seen it time and time again. He's, uh, he's taken to that right back spot, I think, like a, a fish to water, really. And, you know, defending well when he's needed to. And he's unlucky again there, Aidan O'Brien. You see him, he's just great ball from Aidan McGeady. It just, just pops up in front of him and he can't keep over the top of the ball. And this one just before half time comes out to, to Dan Neal. You can see what he's looking for, just takes a touch just doesn't quite get enough loft on it or, or the distance in that far post and Jeskalainen's comfortable start of the second half is it Winchester yeah he cuts the ball out Winchester could have rolled it into is it Aidan O'Brien outside him but he takes the strike on and he, he catches it quite well and this is the this is the goal now as it just goes through a lot of bodies you see crew there they've got five or six lads across the six yard box it misses everyone comes to Ross Stewart there and he can't miss a couple of yards out of the far post I think this is the yeah, this is the, the one save, wasn't it, second half that Hoffman had to make, similar to the one uh, on Saturday, really, yeah. wasn't it? That looping header where he's up full stretch and just get, gets tips on it to, to deal with it. But uh, I thought he was quite bright when he came on there. Cashcut. Uh, but tries a little bit too much, I think. He, he done Dan nearly had an option to pull it back and then he went, went back in for more. Another Hoffman save there. Yeah, they had, they had a little spell here, crew, didn't they, where we perhaps took our foot off the gas uh, a little bit, comfort zone, but... Uh, it's a Ross Stewart, it's difficult. Ross Stewart, I think he's on a hat-trick now. Take another touch and get your shot away. But to be fair to him, you know, if, if he nicks that past the last man, Aidan McGeady's in one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. So you see Ross is unselfish. That was the same as the, 
the one in the Cheltenham game, wasn't it? But here we are on the counter-attack now, that fourth one, look on that far side, you've got Dan Neal and Carl Winchester getting up in support, and I thought the chance had gone away from him there, because he, he didn't actually have a great touch to Yaku, it sort of got away from him, but he recovers well and he cracks it Cal past McFadden, the goalkeeper. Cal the defender who's running back with him. With him, there. yeah. But uh, no, he, he does really well, you see McFadden in there, he's getting back, I think, you know, he, you could perhaps look at the goalkeeper if you're being harsh at near post. You're thinking if he's going to be, if he's going to go far corner, but he, he strikes it really well to be fair, Diaco, and it's past the keeper in a flash. And this one there, Denver Hume came on just to helps it over the crossbar, ball coming in, and that's where we're saying now, can we get that clean sheet? And we, and we managed to this evening. That first one was it 12 games in. Now we've got the first clean sheet away from home. Yeah, and that'll mean a lot to Lee Johnson, won't it? As much as the win. It, it will do, yeah. And as I said there, the lads at the back, you know, with frustration for me. We've had a couple couple of games where we've we've defended well, but then you go back to Fleetwood, you know, we give that one away in the last minute, costs us. Um, and as a defender, you know, you've, your job first up is to, is to go out there and to get a clean sheet. And we've got, that's our fourth one of the season now, three at home, you know, to go away from home and to, and to get them. And then the other teams now will be coming in, in and around us as well, um, just having a look at it. They'll get back in the change rooms looking at bloody hell, look at Sunderland, you know, 4 0 away from home. They've gone back to back victories away from home. Look at the gap there. See what it means to Lee Johnson. Yeah, I think we've seen that at Wigan a couple of weeks ago. It's been a John Travolta. Temping bowling. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, he's delighted, isn't he? Uh, going away from home. Two long journeys uh, for the boys, but, you know, six points. And I'm looking forward to um, Charlton now at the weekend. And we'll see, we'll see how the results have gone for us tonight. We'll see the league table. Uh, but I think Charlton have been beat tonight. Well, let's look at the other scores from in and around EFL League One then, if we can, please. Cambridge United 1, Sheffield Wednesday 1, Charlton 2, Accrington 3, Cheltenham 3, Morecambe 1, Fleetwood 0, Burton 1, Gillingham 1, Doncaster 0, Lincoln 0, AFC Wimbledon 1, Oxford 2, Shrewsbury 0, Plymouth 3, Bolton 0, Portsmouth nil, Ipswich four, Rotherham nil, Wickham nil, Wigan one, MK Dons two. So some interesting results there. They are, yeah, yeah. Just look, obviously Wigan getting beat. Uh, look at Portsmouth as well. I think it's that their third third fourth game. Obviously they beat us four. I think they got beat, didn't they? And then they've had another four nil hiding again tonight. So uh, Plymouth as well going strong still at the top. You know you're looking at them, and I think a few people didn't fancy Plymouth to be up there at the start of the season, but. You've got to give them credit. And we've got Charlton at the weekend. They've been, been beat again, yeah. At Charlton. Look at Charlton. Quite a strong squad on paper as well, Charlton, but they're struggling. They're finding it difficult. Um, but yeah, you're looking at that and they say, what was the other one that was in and around? Yeah, Rotherham and Wickham. Can nil, see nil. What it does to the table? Yeah, we'll have a look at it. Here it is. This is how the league table looks this evening. Sunderland are in second, having played two games less than Plymouth. On 28 points, Wickham in third on 27. Wigan dropped to fourth on 25. And that's a big win for Sunderland. Yeah, it's massive, isn't it? Yeah, as you see there, and Plymouth, although they've had that win, you know, a good win it was for them against um, Bolton at home, but they'll be looking at that now. No, we've obviously got the two games in hand on them. And yeah, we are looking at it, and we look at the table, and it's still, we're a quarter of the way through the season, but you just look at it now, and that, that pack there, really, you, you're staying in there, and you've got to take care of your own results, and we've done that. And then you'll obviously have others that are, are slipping up. And then you say, you look at Wigan tonight, have, have been beat. Wickham drawing with Rotherham, they're those two teams in and around us, taking points off each other. So, uh, no, it's been, it's been a good night for us. And uh, as I say there, let's roll on Saturday and see, see how we go against Charlton. OK, that's the league table as it stands this evening. Now it's over to your hashtags as we have a look at hashtag Ask Danny. And don't forget, this evening you could win the Sunderland editions of FIFA 22. And Danny will be judging whoever's the best hashtag this evening wins a copy of FIFA 22 on their preferred console. Here's the first one from Daniel. It says, as a player, did you have any <coughs> unique match day superstitions? Uh, yeah, I did actually. Yeah, well, I used to put just my left pad on first and my left boot <laughs> on first. I was a lefty one. So yeah, that was a, a bit of a strange one. I know people have them. Um, some some lads, I think, don't like to put the shirt on until they come out of the changing rooms. Um, Does anyone have any funny ones? Can you remember any funny? Um, not off the top of my head, no. No, I think uh, a few obviously kissing rings, different stuff, uh, wedding rings and stuff. But um, no, that was me. Yeah, left pad went on first, followed by my left boot. You like that, don't you? It's tickled to yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to the next one then. 
from Hurricane. This one says, Danny, it's great to have you back at the club with SAFC. Uh, a lot of ex Sunderland players seem to hold a strong connection and follow the club long after they leave to play for other clubs. What do you think it is about Sunderland that draws people back? Well, you just you you live here in the northeast, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, my missus uh, brought me back. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, I obviously married a, a girl from Sunderland, so I, I'm back up here in the northeast. But no, I think I had five years going into my sixth season at the club, and I just early on for myself, you know, coming from Chester, where. We, we'd actually got promoted from the conference into to League Not two. Chesterley Street. Not Chesterley Street, no Chester, um, the, the North West. But uh, no, we um, coming from there where you're getting crowds of four or 5,000 in League Two. And then I think we were fourth in the championship when I joined the club. Um, and then straight away you're seeing the size of the stadium, the training ground, the fan base, everything about it. You know, you're, you're out and about around the town and you're seeing all, everybody in shirts whatever day of the week it is Sunderland fans and what football means to people in the North East and for me that just gripped me straight away you know um, and what it meant to the people of Sunderland and it's so, I think it just grows into you really I know I'm not from the North East but being up here now uh, I say I was at the club for five seasons going into my sixth season when I left um, and then I've obviously been back up here now for the last four or five years um, obviously been playing away finished my playing days a couple of seasons ago but been living up in here in Durham um, coming to the games when I wasn't involved doing this work but just being at the ground and it's, it's sad to see obviously where we're at this moment in time from from when I left the club yeah because when you left there was the in Drummerville Consortium yeah. you know Niall Quinn was heavily involved wasn't he at the, at the club was, and then yeah. since you left it's been a change of ownerships hasn't yeah. there as well but do you feel now there's a bit of a, a similar feel-good factor to the, maybe your, one of your promotion seasons here? Yeah, I think, I think it's coming back. Certainly since I left, as you say there, when, when Steve Bruce was in charge and we were in the Premier League and then obviously you know four or five years where we were sort of hanging on really in, in the Premier League and then fell away, back-to-back -back relegations. Uh, and then we found ourselves down in League One, which is obviously not where a club like this should be. But that's, what, that's how football goes. You know, Other clubs, big clubs have found themselves down at this level. And it's obviously taken us longer to get back to where we want to be. Um, we've had three three goes at it and we've failed. Now, obviously, the new chairman has come in. There's a big, you know, um, say raise in, in the, the expectations at, at the club as a whole, really. And at this moment in time, we're off to a good start this season. Now, it's a fourth crack at it. We're still early days. There's a lot of promising signs um, in terms of, this, I'll say, the strength and depth of what we've got at the club. Um, but we've had a few injuries already. But... Hopefully, this is the season where we can get back to, you know, taking those strides and getting back to, to where we should be. Yeah, and performances like tonight are a bit of an example of how things are a little bit different this season. Let's move on to the next one then. It's from Adam. Would you continue to play a younger, less experienced side in the Cups and Trophies and concentrate on the league if you were the gaffer? It's a good question. I would, as, as we've done really, I think you assess it. Um, it's obviously, the Papa John's isn't a priority for us in terms of trying to win it. Yes, we won it last year. But yeah, he's right. Priority for us is getting out of this league, or say as soon as we can, that we're, the fourth time of asking, as we've just said there. Um, I, I would use it for lads who, uh, as we mentioned, Denver, who needed game time. Pritchard played at Lincoln. Uh, I know O'Brien, he, he'd come back into the first team setup, so he had some game time in, in that game. Uh, you've got Jamajli. He's obviously played a few 23s, played last night for the 23s. I think he could come into it maybe against Bradford now. So, yeah, I'd be using it as, as you know, a stepping stone for these boys from the 23s as well. Some of these lads have taken their chance. As we mentioned, Wern, you know, uh, Harris getting involved in the first team. Sonner, there's one or two others who are pushing. Uh, Oli Younger, I think he's been great as well in those, in those two games he's played as well. Uh, yes, they haven't got on again this evening, some of these boys, but they've got to be they're in and around it. They're in the gaffers. Uh, plans really when we're, when we're getting these injuries and I said on Saturday he needs to know if these boys are going to be ready to step in if they're going to be called upon and I think one or two of these lads have shown in those games I like the look of Wern I thought he was bright last week um, just a shame really he didn't come on tonight could have maybe got 10-20 minutes at the end but he never but they've got to keep plugging away in the in the, the training sessions when they're involved with the first team and uh, as I say when Lee Johnson calls them up to the, the first team squad but yeah that's certainly you know, the, the League Cup, what we're into, is it last 16 we're in now against QPR mm. in that? You're sort of taking it serious there. I'd still well, stick... We've almost got a Papa John's side, a League Cup yeah. side, a, a League side. We don't know if we've got an FA Cup side yet. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's the thing as well. It's all well and good being in these games, but we don't want it to come in and bite us in the backside. You know, yeah. we're obviously international break, so we're behind one or two games with the likes of Plymouth already. Uh, we don't want that backlog of fixtures. It's all well and good 
being in these cup competitions, but we know that the first priority is the league. Then you could possibly look at the League Cup. When you're down to the last 16 now, we've got QPR. If we get through that, you're drawing a, a big team, hopefully. Um, you know, you get a good crowd in for that one. And then we've got the FA Cup to come as well. But certainly the Papa John's, you know, we've got Bradford, which is obviously now a dead rubber because we're already through. Give these lads another run out, which I'm sure he's going to. Uh, maybe, as I said, with the sprinkling of a Jamajli, a Denver Hume or one or two others who need some minutes to catch up and go from there, really. OK, let's move on to the next one, please. Uh, from Slightly Ask You, says, uh, have you ever felt so helpless, so utterly devoid of control as when you're reliant on the EFL cameraman? Well, tonight was a bit difficult. Yeah, we have some of these grounds, tilt don't we? Down. Yeah, when it's tight and, uh, you know, the cameraman can't pan down there, it is difficult. And uh, <laughs> as you pointed out on many of occasion. Uh, but uh, no, I think uh, overall, like last yeah, year... Yeah, there was an incident in the second half as well, where something definitely happened. Over there, yeah, on the right hand went side on. There was the a bit of shouting going on, and Carl Winchester had a word, and the fourth official came over, but then we, uh, we didn't see what happened over there. Carl Boyson came back on the pitch and just got on with play, didn't he? The good news is we're back on the gantry on Saturday against Charlton, so we'll keep an eye on everything for yeah, you. It's, like, it's, it's easier for us, isn't it, when we're at yeah. home. Um, you know, we're out on the gantry, you can see the full pitch, you can see the shapes, the formations, what's going on on the, on the technical area. As I say tonight, the 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 fourth officials on the far side, it wasn't zoomed in. The, the board's all a bit blurry when the substitutions are going on. If the cameraman's not keeping up with play and the subs, then we are reliant on life, him, as you've said. Yeah, and, we are, uh, it makes our life easier. It becomes easier. difficult for us. Okay then, next one, please. Steve, Steve Taylor, not that one. Um, do you think the club will need to spend on the squad in the January window. Now, when we've done our podcast with Christian and the gaffer and other people around the club, there was already plans at the end of the last transfer window yeah. for this transfer window coming. Yeah. You obviously, yeah. we've had been hit with injuries quite a lot. Yeah. Where do you think they'd be looking to spend if, if we are? Yeah, no, I, we asked him that question, don't we? Do you relax now and just see how things go? What are you planning? And, and Christian said, didn't he? No, we're always looking. We're looking to build and strengthen in certain areas. And then maybe lads who aren't getting game time who might want to look to move on in January. So you've got to try and balance it and, and keep on working. Uh, in terms of spending, I'm not sure how much they're looking to spend. And obviously the injuries, what we've got at the minute, I think seven or eight. You know, you're looking at Jordan Willis, he's, he's long term. So I think he's, you can write him off for this yeah. season. But the other seven or eight who we've got at this moment in time, I know Pritchard's gone off again tonight. Hopefully he's OK and it's just precautionary that he's, he's gone off tonight. So then you're weighing up. Obviously, we're still a way off uh, January at this moment in time. A lot of games, a lot of football to be played until then. But they'll weigh it up, I'm sure, coming up to that if we've maybe got one or two injuries in key positions. Um, if you look at it at this moment in time, you've got Winchester... At right back, um, you've got Dennis Serkin and Denver Hume at left back. Huggins is obviously injured. He's out for a couple of months, isn't he now? So they may think we need to go and get a, a full back in as well to cover. But I'm sure Christian um, and as Harvey, they're working at this moment yeah, in time. Stuart Harvey, Stuart yeah. Harvey they're, they're working at this moment in time and looking at this and then having to weigh it up, uh, communicating with the physios, how long is he likely to be out for? And then putting things in place in case... Uh, these lads don't recover in time. so Of course, some it, of the younger players could go out on loans as well, but yes. obviously the Christian and uh, Lee Johnson are big fans of. Yeah, no, I think you look at um, Jack Diamond, Josh Hawks have both gone out on loan. I think that's the right thing for them. If they're not going to be... Anthony Patterson going yeah, out on loan yeah, as well. If they're not getting game time, get them out on loan. At, you know, League Two level, obviously Patterson's gone to, to the conference to play, but they're getting game time. Getting regular game time is better than maybe coming off the bench for 10, 15 minutes here or, or playing 23s games. I think that's the best thing to do. But yeah, we'll have to weigh it up. And you can see where we've recruited this year. We've brought some experience in with, with the likes of Corey Evans and Pritchard. And also we've brought some younger lads in from these Premier League clubs, which a lot of teams at this level seem to do. Even crew tonight, you've mentioned one or two there. Uh, Bennett coming in from uh, Spurs, I think you mentioned. So I'm sure they've, they've got their feelers out there already, got the, the scouts out there looking at potential lads to, to be bringing in in January. It was also Robertson this, this evening. Yeah, it was quite good. He's right, a lot yeah, from Celtic exactly, as yeah. well. Let's have a look at the final one, I think, from CT. At me and hashtag ask Danny. Do you think time on the training ground to get the manager's philosophy ingrained in the side is now working rather than last season catch up where it was a relentless schedule of matches and recovery? Well, we're certainly going to be in that relentless schedule yeah, at the moment. I feel like it's really, even just for ourselves, it's Saturday, yeah. Tuesday, isn't it? And with all the cup competitions coming up as well, which we're still in all the cups at the moment. But do you think that the time that Lee Johnson's had over the summer to get that philosophy ingrained, not just in the first team, but throughout the football club, is starting to work? 
Well, it is, yeah, because when he came in, you're obviously into the into the season. And as you say there, you're Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Tuesday, relentless. And he's not getting a lot of time to work with the lads. I think, um, you know, you have your recovery days. The lads who have played uh, are often on the exercise bikes or in the swimming pools recovering. The other lads need to go out and have a little five-a-side or keep them ticking over. So you don't really always get the squad together and to work through shape play as much as he would have liked. Now, obviously, you go into the summer, you get your pre-season, your four or five weeks in pre-season to work with the lads, but we recruited late as well, didn't we? So you look at a lot of the lads who are out there playing now, um, weren't in during that time where he would have liked to have worked them. So we, although he's, he's had to, you know, he'll have, he'll have done the days with them, uh, maybe long hours with the boys, but that's what's been needed to, to try and transform it, to transition from where maybe we were, played a different system last year with, with Charlie Wyke, um, and he's got lads in there now who he feels and maybe a little bit more mobile around the pitch. And I think that's that showed throughout these early you know, 10, 12 games into the season so far, and obviously the cup games as well, where we're trying to play through lines a little bit more. Dan Neal's come into the team last year. He, was, he, he wasn't getting the game time last year. You know, you look at him now, he's creating a lot. Is it four or five assists, as you've said I there think he's already? Up to six assists. Six no, assists. Maybe um, five or six. Yeah, just playing in there, taking the ball and playing us through the lines, whereas before it was a little bit more pedestrian, I felt. Um, teams were getting the chance to get back into their shape. We were struggling to break them down as much, especially here at the Stadium of Light. Um, it, we found it difficult. We were relying on maybe balls getting out to Aidan McGeady, Lyndon Gooch, putting balls in the box, and hopefully Charlie White was in there to get on the end of stuff. But now we're creating different types of goals, I think. You see tonight, you know, whether it's from set plays, um, you know, those little give and goes, what we've seen for the second goal, um, just different types of goals, really, and, and creating stuff. And that he's had that time throughout pre-season to work with the squad and the lads who have come in have had to adapt and to take it on board quick and not just on the training pitch as well, you can do that in the meeting rooms as well. They'll have, uh, like to Bodzer who works behind the scenes and, and these lads who are, uh, you know, with the computers, drawing up different types of graphics, different formations and then they can sit in the meeting room for half an hour after a training session and say, this is what we want to do, this is where we're looking for you to go. If Aidan McGeady's coming now, I want the fullbacks getting outside him for circuit as, as we've seen. So. There's, there's different stuff they've had to work on, but certainly it's, it's benefited him having a, a full pre-season with the lads as opposed to coming in after, what was it, 15 games or yeah. so last season. OK, Danny, thanks for your thoughts this evening. I'll let you choose off-camera who gets the, uh, the FIFA, because to make it fair, unless you want to do it now. Uh, no, I think... Uh, do, do, do you want to? On camera? Off camera? Are we giving one each or are we giving no, the No, they only get one, but they get to decide which console they get. Oh, right, OK, yeah. And then we'll keep on for again. Uh, I, I'd probably go for... There's some good questions there, by the good way. questions. Thank you very much. I think I'll go for the one asking me about coming to Sunderland and what it means to come into the club. Ah, I think, yeah. Go. Yeah. Hurricane. The hurricane, yeah. Is that the one? Strong connection yeah, to the so. club. Yeah, and I think that you see it with a lot of the lads now as well coming into the club. I think, yeah... You either get it as a player or you don't. Um, you know, coming to the club, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully he's into computer games, by the yeah. way. Uh, we'll have to see. Let's hope and see. All right, uh, we'll maybe do this again because I think it's been quite successful. Look at that. These Sunderland FIFAs, we'll try and do it uh, on another occasion if we can. Okay, then, we are back in action and on SAFC Live on Saturday against Charlton Athletic uh, at home at the Stadium of Light where we're broadcasting from this evening. 3 p.m. kickoff means SAFC Live will be on air from 2.30 on Saturday. I hope you can join us. We'll see you soon.